Following yesterday's video where we went through a load of your comments, somebody asked me, what do you have against Daniel Kratinsky? What you got against Kratinsky was the comment as I, as I remember it. Now, that was quite pertinent actually because a news story popped up on my phone about Daniel Kratinsky's finances. And this was after I recorded the video and it was quite timely really. And it wasn't just sort of any old story. It were quotes from Kieran Maguire. Now, you know who Kieran Maguire is. Kieran Maguire is probably the most respected academic and voice on the finances of football. In fact, I've got it here. What is his... What's his blog called? The Price of Football. We've had him on the channel on a couple of occasions. Gio has interviewed Kieran Maguire. He knows his stuff. He knows his stuff, basically. Now, Kieran Maguire has basically suggested that West Ham needs, will need additional finance for next season to bring players in because Kratinsky can't get a hold of his money. Now, sometimes these stories just pop up and I think they get, it depends when they pop up. If these stories pop up on a slow news day, they're there and they're, they're sort of back page news, as it were, well, in West Ham terms at least. I think it's sort of got lost off the back of um, Zuma getting injured, looks injured, by the way, Zuma, we'll deal with that in another video. Um, obviously, the capitulation to Brentford, the debate about how strong our squad was, all of that stuff. I think the story about Kratinsky's finances got completely lost and unless I unless I, I missed it I must say I wasn't looking around the whole internet but by and large it, I was surprised to see this story um let's just go back to the comment about what I've got against Kratinsky I just want to lay this out there I don't have anything against Kratinsky I, I am I have I am completely undecided by him I was only making the point that when it looked like he was about to take the club take the club shares I wasn't at that point jumping for joy saying, really, there's our new billionaire owner who's going to go and spend loads of money. I, I I, need to see him spend money before I decide that he's going to spend money. I'm not convinced he's going to take over full ownership of the club, for instance. I just don't know until I until I see it. I really don't. And when I looked at his track record, Kratinsky, he didn't have a massive track record of buying companies outright. He's, I think he only owns 40% of... Um, of Sparta, of Sparta Prague, if I've got that right. I think even while he's been there, their record transfer fee is only about four million. I know it's all relative, and obviously a club in the in the Czech league is not going to spend massive money. But my my point is, he doesn't he doesn't do that. What what we hoped he would do. Even I think he's got shares in Royal Mail, but not all of them. He's got shares in Sainsbury's, but not all of them. So on and so forth. But this isn't about that. It's just about the shares that he has in. And some, he's basically got a load of money tied up in Russian investments. And Kieran was going to go on to say, well, hold on, he can't actually get this money at the moment. So, um, well, that, that that poses an awful lot of questions from me, certainly. I mean, the first question that I would have on that was, hold on a second, bearing in mind that's sort of happened relatively recently, did we miss the best opportunity to buy? And that was January. I mean, nobody could have foreseen what was going to happen and uh, you know that I guess there'll be some I don't want to get too much into the Ukraine and, and Russia thing but actually for Russian companies to have their assets seized or oligarchs to have their assets seized and basically Russia to be unable to trade which is the problem with him getting his money I don't think too many people foresaw that but it does go to say we actually probably could have got his hands on his money in January so that probably was the best time for West Ham to say, oh, excuse me, new Mr. Um, Major Stakeholder, can we have a bit of money for a new sign-in, please? The, but it was actually a wording of it. Let me just try and click it up somewhere here. Kieran Maguire uh, has said West Ham need fresh funds as a source um, due to Daniel Kratinsky's financial problems. We need to source new funds from somewhere. The, the nature of what Kieran was saying, or at least how I read it was... West Ham might need another investor to come and put some money in. Well, that ain't good. I mean, that ain't good. And what it does do, because obviously it's not... What it shows is this is not from his personal wealth. He's not going to bankroll West Ham from his personal wealth. OK, so it's actually down to uh, an investment from him, which is what I sort of suspected anyway. We've got an investor in. 
I don't think it's... I think that the only person in the Premier League at the moment we know is really not an investor is Sheikh Mansour. He's not really looking for any investment back. Abramovich was like that, but he's gone now. I wouldn't blame Chelsea fans for being as cautious as I am. I see a lot of them getting all excited because one of the guys that's meant to be bidding for them apparently is worth 23 billion. Well, I'll tell you what, he didn't get his 23 billion by throwing money away. And uh, before they start to think that they've hit hit it big again, you may well find that they come in and run it like the Fenway Group run um, Liverpool. Nothing wrong with that if you've got a good manager who can buy, sell, buy and sell well. Um, but they're not going to get somebody bankrolling the club. They might, they might not. But before they start saying that they're the richest club in the world, I, I would just probably beware on that one. Maybe the Saudis will do it at Newcastle. Maybe they won't. They actually don't know yet. Um, let's be perfectly honest with you. You could say, by and large, all they've done thus far is spent the money that Mike Ashley had saved. They may well go on to do it, but we don't know. That's my point. Um, what it does go to show, if this is true, is that Krasinski's not going to put his own money in there. So what happened to the money that he used to buy the shares? Well, apparently, we hear it went to pay off debt. And when you read this article, when you listen to what Kieran's got to say... He said there is a way that Kretinsky could still supply West Ham with funds for the summer, and that is to basically give West Ham loans from his companies. Well, this is sounding less and less romantic the longer the, longer the article was going on, quite frankly, because sort of almost what's the point? He's come in, he's paid, he's used his money to pay off the debt, the debt, I guess, that was owed to the... There was a little... There was some unsecured debt, wasn't there? And then there were the debts to Golden Sullivan. So he's come in. We paid off the unsecured debt, paid off the debt to Golden Sullivan. And now it looks like if we want to spend any money again, we'll have to put ourselves back in debt, but that debt will be to him. I'm I'm not really massively impressed with the sounds of all of this, really. And this goes back to what I was saying yesterday, which is it doesn't really matter um, whether you think, David, you we, West Ham... There are better managers out there for David Moyes. I'm not sure there are too many managers out there that could operate as well as David Moyes, given the financial constraints. And I do believe they are financial constraints now, because you've only got to look at how thin our squad is. There's only, you can only go on for so long and say, oh, well, we just can't manage to get hold of anyone. Actually, the squad is thin. Because without doing I'm not going to do a whole video on what players we need. The longer the season's gone, no, look, we all know we need a striker and a central midfielder, central defender, even more so than ever. Look what happened to Zuma. Um, but the longer the season goes on, it's hard to say, actually, that we don't need a left back now. Actually, I think we do. Uh, and, and I've said uh, we need a left winger. If you'd asked me at the start of the season, I probably would have said no, we don't. We've also definitely missed Jesse Lingard. There's no doubt about it. Um, and then as far as we know, we've got... Newcastle sniffing around Jared Bowen at the moment. Now, again, I'm not sure I believe that. And there was something I said the other day. This is why the the capitulation to Brentford was so disappointing. There is, well, there's, there's several ways of keeping him out of the clutches of Newcastle. Probably the biggest one is to make sure we qualify for European football. So it doesn't matter how much money Newcastle would throw at Jared Bowen or West Ham. Bowen would just say, no, actually, I quite enjoyed playing in Europe. Um, I'd like to do so again. Um, that that does that does it again. And by doing that, the easiest way to do it is actually by qualifying sixth or seventh in the league, rather than thinking we'll win the Europa League, which obviously I, I hope we do both. But uh, and it's not over yet. Don't get me wrong. But I do think that was a really uh, important thing for us to do, and that's why uh, Brentford was an important game. I do believe that it would be very very hard for West Ham to spin anything at all in any way shape or form in terms of anything to do with the board or the Krasinski takeover or investment or purchase of shares they wouldn't be able to spin it in any sort of positive light if Newcastle were able to come in and buy Jared Bowen off West Ham I mean you might as well be waving a white flag saying that's it you know look we had a little go we when we basically when we were strong we didn't go for it we didn't strike we didn't invest we, we had a, the best opportunity that West Ham and West Ham have had in years to find ourselves up there through some of our own good work, it has to be said, as, as a club, as a manager, as a squad, to get us up there. But also, because Man United were not doing particularly well. The last couple of seasons, at various times, Man United, um, obviously Tottenham, a bit better now, for, for sure. 
Arsenal. These clubs are doing worse than they traditionally have. We almost had Chelsea last season because they were in a bit of turmoil. They might have been a bit of turmoil again, but what I'm saying is we found ourselves in a position where we could strike and actually really push forward and I think speed up the process, really. Speed up the process of elevating ourselves as a club due to our own good management in terms of David Moyes and also those other clubs being um, having sort of a bit of a crap time. If if Newcastle can come in and take Bowen, then we, we're more or less saying, well, actually, we had a little bit. We couldn't do it. Uh, we're going to go back and just be also ran, also Rans. We're going to let somebody who finished lower than us in the league come and take our player. And why? Well, because we can't afford to. And actually, if you then, if we can't afford to keep him. And at that point, you would have to concede, well, hold on a second. Well, Kratinsky coming in has really made no benefit at all to us. In fact, I would suggest, if this is true... And I hope Kieran Maguire's wrong. If this is true, then actually there's been no benefit of Kuczynski coming in at all. We've had one window, nothing's happened. All right, I know a lot of people like to lay the blame at David Moyes, and I get that. And even I I, I found David Moyes guilty. I think there's a bit of a diverer in him. Um, I don't blame him for not spending the big bucks, actually. I, I blame him for not bringing in a loan player or two once it was evident that that he couldn't get the players that he wanted. That being said... David Moyes did give the board some targets. He did. He said, we know this, I want Rafina, and I want Darwin Nunes. The fact of the matter is, we didn't have enough money to buy them. It's That's a fact. Because apparently we went in for, um, we had Fabrizio Romano on. We went in with whatever. Let, let's call the Rafina one 40 million euros of being generous. Well, we probably would have got him for 60 million euros. Right? It's a fair assumption. We did, but we probably didn't because we didn't have it. Darwin Nunes, apparently we bid 40, 50 million euros. Well, they want 65 million euros. I think that might be it. Well, we've got the price, 65 million euros. So we would have got him, right? We didn't have it. We haggled, we didn't get him. So actually, David Moyes, can, at that point, David Moyes can turn around and say, well, I've given you targets. We just couldn't afford them. Now, I, I, look, I, I don't mind so much that in, in as much as that in itself, it's big money, but it does go to the point where we couldn't afford them before and we can't afford them now after Krasinski's come in. So what's the improvement? It just, it's like Golden Sullivan, if you ask me. It just seems very, very similar. I'm happy to be proved wrong, but I'm not going to ignore this video. Uh, sorry, this video. I'm not going to ignore this article from somebody like Kieran Maguire, who is a respected voice in football finances. Now, he does actually go on to say in the article that... He doesn't expect um, this, uh, let's call it an embargo, a trade embargo, if you like, on Russia to be going in three or four years' time. Kratinsky will be able to get his money and it all should be OK. But with all due, all due respect to Kieran Maguire, he is a football expert, and I've, I've called him now. I've said there's no more respected figure. I, I don't, as far as I know, Kieran is not an expert on uh, on conflict in the former uh, in the former Soviet Union. So, I mean, I just you just don't know. Hope should, could possibly be able to get at his money in three or four years? Well, maybe. Um, but quite possibly, I don't know how much money kratinsky has got. I think it's three, three and a half billion. Well, what if a billion of that is tied up in Russian investments? I don't know. It's probably going to be unlikely if you've lost a third of your income, you can't get a third of your money, that you're going to go and want to sanction 200 million spending on football players. You'll probably tighten your belt and keep it a little bit tight at the moment. Um, I don't know. I, I, I didn't like what I read at all. Do know one thing, and I know that the squad is... I was, I was going to say perilously thin. It's not perilously thin. Uh, we, we, have a, we have a squad that can finish in the top half of the table. We've seen that. that that's not beyond doubt. OK, fine. But what we don't have is a squad that's good enough to compete at the very top level. Because when it comes to the crunch, we struggle. When it comes to after the European Games... We tend to lose now, particularly in all the first team playing. We haven't got enough players. And you look at this and you worry about us being able to finance an, enough good players to keep Declan Rice interested, have enough finance to keep Jared Bowen. And even something like Jesse Lingard may well turn around and say, oh, well, you know, I'm, I really enjoyed my time there, guys, but you don't look to be pushing forward. Um, 
you know, Newcastle United are the forward thinking club. And if we were to sell Bowen, you couldn't blame him for that because that it doesn't matter how you, you spin it, that would be the messaging, wouldn't it? Newcastle are ambitious, we're not, we're, we're, we're selling. We cannot, that was it, that was our best go. We can't afford to improve the squad anymore. Look, I hope it's all fine. It sound, might sound a little bit doom and gloom. I'm going to sort of refresh now and get ready for the, the European game. And we can win that, by the way. Don't get don't get me wrong at all. And I'm, I'm happy to be corrected. But this is not my article. I didn't write this article. As I say, this comes from the mouth of somebody who we do respect on this channel. And, and well, it's not just this channel. Look, whenever there's any funny stuff with finances going on in football... And nobody understands it. Who do Talk Sport get in when they get in Kieran Maguire? Who does Sky get in when they get in Kieran Maguire? BBC, they get in Kieran Maguire. This is everybody's go to guy. This is the expert in football finances. And it's him saying West Ham might need to source some funds from elsewhere if they want to buy players. Not good at all. 